Hello and welcome to another episode of 5 minutes of Fortinet. Today is all about two-factor authentication. And that's because identity-based attacks are becoming more prevalent than ever before. Think about phishing or stolen credentials. One of the easiest measures a company can take is to have an adequate MFA solution in place besides having a decent password hygiene. When it comes to 2FA on FortiGate, we can use OTP values which are being sent by email or SMS, or we can use the dedicated two-factor authentication product of Fortinet, which is called FortiToken. FortiToken exists in a mobile version, which supports push notifications, as you can see here on my right, or you can use the hardware FortiToken, which looks like this. FortiTokens can be managed on a FortiGate or and this will be the subject of today, is to use FortiToken Cloud to manage all your 2FA needs for FortiGate, Forti Authenticator, and even third-party solutions if you want to. The reason why you would use this SaaS service is because it gives you more possibilities, like for example the automated onboarding of new users, the possibility to use one token for multiple services, and the possibility to create policies to restrict access based on geographical regions or implement safety mechanisms like too fast to travel. You can access 40 token from the support portal. If this is the first time, you can benefit from a free trial as well. One of the most interesting features of Forti Token Cloud is the ability to automatically assign tokens to new users in an LLAP server. This is a feature which was introduced in FortiOS 7.0.6. In order to set this up, we need an LDAP server, in my case I'm going to use my domain controller, and to enable 2FA via Forti Token Cloud, we need to edit the LDAP server in CLI. I've added the relevant documentation in the description of this video. In the command line interface, go to the LDAP server you have just created and enable FortiToken Cloud by the set two factor FortiToken Cloud command. You may also add a filter for this, as I can imagine that not every user in your Active Directory needs a FortiToken. I have created a separate security group for this in my Active Directory and I will add the filter query to only assign tokens to this specific group. There is a very good article about creating these groups on the docs portal. I will add the link below. So this is the query I will be using. In short, I filter for every user with whatever UPN as long as they are a member of the FTC users user group located in my demo OU. Now let's type end to save our changes and then we can run some diagnostics commands to verify that we've configured everything correctly. Once that's done, we can execute sync by triggering the mechanism with the execute for token cloud sync command. As you can see on the screen, the sync was successful. And if we have a look at our 40 token cloud portal, we can see that two new users have been added. That's great. But now let's test what actually happens if we add a new user to our user group. Therefore, I go into Active Directory and I add the last user to the group. Now, a sync to FortiToken Cloud doesn't happen immediately. It is synced every 24 hours, or I could use the execute FortiToken Cloud sync command. Of course, I'm going to go for the most easy solution. So, let's wait 24 hours. I'm going to take a nap. 24 hours later. Okay, so the third user has been synced and that's just great. Now, before we continue, I have a little tip because nothing stops you from creating an automation stitch which syncs your 40 token cloud more often. I will do a video about these automation stitches later this year. Now, let's head back to our 40 token cloud portal and see what other features we can use. The 40 token cloud environment is separated based on realms. In an MSSP setup, every customer will have its own realm. In realm, you define what MFA you want to use, like for example, 40 token mobile, SMS, email, and the hardware 40 token. Over here, you can also implement security, like for example, detecting replay attacks. And you can also add an adaptive authentication policy. 
In this pane, you can also fine tune all the settings concerning your different MFA options. And in the template section, you have the possibility to fine tune the messages for onboarding emails, OTP SMSs, OTP emails, etc. Now, we've seen how we can add users to FortiToken Cloud, and we've also seen how you can manage your realm with your default system settings. Lastly, I also want to lightly tackle the security features within FortiToken Cloud. Therefore, we can use adaptive authentication policies. These define when MFA is enforced, when it is blocked, and when you can bypass it. In the example on the screen, I've created a policy which blocks impossible travel. This means that when I first log in from Belgium and then from China, my authentication will be blocked. You can also just block access from a specific country or region. Let's also add another policy. This time we want to bypass MFA when we are at an office location. This is typically a subnet policy. And here we're going to define the public IP address of our office. Because we are creating this policy for an office location, we only want it to trigger during office hours. Let's save this policy and create a profile in order to add them to a realm. In this profile, you can define the default authentication action. In our case, we always want to trigger MFA unless we are in the conditions of one of our policies. Let's add our policies over here and now let's save the profile. The profile can be added to our realm which will define the default actions for all the users within our environment. And this is how you can use FortiToken Cloud in order to secure your MFA for your users. There are still a lot of features which we didn't tackle, but if you have any questions, do not hesitate to put them in the comments, or you can always send an email to tech at exclusive-networks.be. Thanks for being here and see you next time.